chapter three of three contributions to the theory of sex this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen three contributions to the theory of sex by sigmund freud translated by abraham arden brill eighteen seventy four to nineteen forty eight section three general statements applicable to all perversions variation and disease the physicians who had first studied the perversions in pronounced cases and under peculiar conditions were naturally inclined to attribute to them the character of a morbid or degenerative sign similar to the inversions this view however is easier to refute in this than in the former case everyday experience has shown that most of these transgressions at least the milder ones are seldom wanting as components in the sexual life of normals who look upon them as upon other intimacies wherever the conditions are favorable such a perversion may for a long time be substituted by a normal person for the normal sexual aim or it may be placed near it in no normal person does the normal sexual aim lack some designable perverse element and this universality suffices in itself to prove the inexpediency of an opprobrious application of the name perversion in the realm of the sexual life one is sure to meet with exceptional difficulties which are at present really unsolvable if one wishes to draw a sharp line between the mere variations within physiological limits and morbid symptoms nevertheless the quality of the new sexual aim in some of these perversions is such as to require special notice some of the perversions are in content so distant from the normal that we cannot help calling them morbid especially those in which the sexual impulse in overcoming the resistances shame loathing fear and pain has brought about surprising results licking of feces and violation of cadavers yet even in these cases one ought not to feel certain of regularly finding among the perpetrators persons of pronounced abnormalities or insane minds we cannot lose sight of the fact that persons who otherwise behave normally are reported as sick in the realm of the sexual life where they are dominated by the most unbridled of all impulses on the other hand a manifest abnormality in any other relation in life generally shows an undercurrent of abnormal sexual behavior in the majority of cases we are able to find the morbid character of the perversion not in the content of the new sexual aim but in its relation to the normal it is morbid if the perversion does not appear beside the normal sexual aim and sexual object where favorable circumstances promote it and unfavorable impede the normal or if it has under all circumstances repressed and supplanted the normal the exclusiveness and fixation of the perversion justifies us in considering it a morbid symptom the psychic participation in the perversions perhaps it is precisely in the most abominable perversions that we must recognize the most prolific psychic participation for the transformation of the sexual impulse in these cases a piece of psychic work has been accomplished in which in spite of its gruesome success the value of an idealization of the impulse cannot be disputed the omnipotence of love nowhere perhaps shows itself stronger than in this one of her aberrations the highest and the lowest everywhere in sexuality hang most intimately together from heaven through the world to hell two results in the study of perversions we have gained an insight into the fact that the sexual impulse has to struggle against certain psychic forces resistances among which shame and loathing are most prominent we may presume that these forces are employed to confine the impulse within the accepted normal limits and if they have become developed in the individual before the sexual impulse has attained its full strength it is really they which have directed it in the course of development 
we have furthermore remarked that some of the examined perversions can be comprehended only by assuming the union of many motives if they are amenable to analysis disintegration they must be of a composite nature this may give us a hint that the sexual impulse itself may not be something simple that it may on the contrary be composed of many components which detach themselves to form perversions our clinical observation thus calls our attention to fusions which have lost their expression in the uniform normal behavior end of general statements applicable to all perversions